is exactly like it was last year. It was a very, very robust conversation where everybody really pretty much in the room got involved and we really appreciate that an awful lot. So thank you, big hand to everyone here. For all the things that we've, I think we've covered an awful lot of ground, which uh, I guess is not particularly surprising given the, given the breadth of the topic. But um, first of all, we started off with uh, a scenario that uh, I think Ron uh, accurately described as scary. Uh, it is pretty scary. Uh, there are some potential downsides to a uh, castle, moat, and drawbridge vision of the future internet. And yet, I think we all agree that we have a fair amount of that already. Uh, as Tom mentioned at, at the very, very end, there are some good arguments in favor of certain kinds of regionalization. But the question is, what kinds of regionalization are we getting and what kinds of regionalization will we get? Will they be better for security? Will they be better for identity? Or will they just be confusing in ways for regimes that perhaps, or groups that we perhaps don't love as much to control us or try to control their people? Um, I heard a few things that I thought were really interesting. Around security, one of the big questions is, is security even really possible? And to what extent could you, if you wish to, take your, take your ball and go home? Take your people and opt out? And we've heard about that through the, uh, through, through the article that, the, that, that Garland mentioned right at the very beginning. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. Is the vision of the Iranian internet or the Brazilian internet a fund fundamentally different vision of the future? I think there are some instances in which that's the case, definitely. Uh, is the United States government, one of the first things that came, that came out in our conversation that was echoed a couple of different times, is the United States government really walking its own talk? Are we willing to accept the internet that we claim to ask for? And in a lot of instances, the answer may be no. And what do we do with that, given that we're not particularly consistent internationally, and perhaps we don't want to be, but what's that mean in terms of our policy? And what does that mean in terms of our focus on things like a ministerial conference, things like the, 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 the future of IGF? Um, we talked about the, the idea that, that the, in a, we talked a little bit about natural disasters, and, and climate change and things like that, and on the potential for dissatisfaction from the population with their government. Is my government doing enough? Is my government responding well? Do I trust my government more or less in, in response to some of these grave crises? And what I heard, especially around the discussion of Japan, was in fact, this is a, this is a potential problem for governments who want the support of their own population in this internet governance debate, and at the same time are perceived as not necessarily being able to respond effectively over the web. We talked at an earlier point, Sally mentioned this idea of the economic impact. Is this, going, is, is this new openness going to be a boon for companies and individuals and uh, capitalists and organizations as well who want to stay in country because they find that they're now in a newly liberalized space? Is it going to free up resources because the government's going to, going, to, going, to, going to go to that different part of the curve where they're going to be checking on you less? Or is this going to be a situation where people who are off the map are going to continue to stay off the map and, in fact, fall farther off the map? Uh, we talked about the whole issue of .XXX and whether it was possible to segregate content that we liked or didn't like. .cat may be segregating content that we like. Triple X may be segregating content that we content that we don't like. Bill made the point that uh, that historically all attempts to isolate fail. Perhaps that's true. In the new IPv6 world, will those attempts to isolate be more powerful as we have more resources? If DARPA, to to your point, Jamal, if DARPA puts some serious resources behind this, will attempts to isolate certain kinds of activities be be more effective? Hard to say. There was a lot of discussion about whether or not the, we, could, we could actually throw away the DNS and whether search is more important than domains in the future. I think that's going to be an issue that will eventually wind its way into this whole conversation in a much bigger way, this whole issue of search, because more and more people, especially as they get to the, the handheld internet, may very well be focused on search in a different way. Uh, other key points, our scenario clearly happening sooner, our timeline is shrunk. Despite our 11-year-old, uh, it may be an 11-year-old who, who, who operationalizes like a 60-year-old at this stage, because time on the internet is happening so fast. Uh, and we had what I thought was a very interesting point about the, the, the three different kinds of users, the general user, your negative user, and your disaffected user, right? 
And one of the big questions is, who in that group is going to stand up and say, follow me, I'm going to help sort out this, this question of the future of internet governance? The general user may have too little interest or too little, too little organization. Certainly, the push from the, from, from the cyber criminals is going to be in the wrong direction. And these disaffected groups, we don't really know, I think everybody agrees, we don't really know how they're going to break. And then the last thing was about trade blocks and internet taxes. We only really touched about that on that very, very briefly. But I think it's fair to say that as things go, especially one of the parts of the scenario that we didn't really touch on very much, but I think is very valid, is we've got significant, we have a tsunami wave of budget crises around the world. And one of the things that in, in every past, speaking now as an economist, which is my background, in, in, in the past what you see is, is, is attempts to try to set up trade barriers and preferences. Is that possible on the web? Is that the kind of thing that will, will enforce a sense of regional identity such that a preference for an EU domiciled uh, company uh, online, but an EU domiciled company might, might become really significant politically? Don't know the answer, but I think it is something that is, that's, that's going to be going to be going to factor into our future. And in terms of internet taxes, my guess is that everyone in the room thinks that it's probably a good idea that we're taxed as little as possible. But uh, I think it's also fair to say that that's that that's a that's a debate that we've only seen the very first beginnings of. So, any other comments? Thank you all very much.